Battle Network is 20 years old. I bet some people feel incredibly old right now. Including me. But I never grew up with Battle Network, so whatever. Today, we will be reviewing Mega Man NT Warrior, the manga, volume 1. Uh, for those who don't know, Mega Man NT Warrior is what the anime and the manga for Battle Network were called. And, uh, yeah, if, if you notice this, um... This, uh, this volume's pretty, um, pretty beat up. I, um, yeah, I, I got this used a while ago. So, yeah, that's, um, that's why it's in such poor shape. But, yeah, we will be talking about the manga of Battle Network. Now, what is Mega Man Battle Network, for those who don't know? Uh, so the main Mega Man series is about Mega Man, also known as Rock, who is this helper robot created by Dr. Lame, who was, uh, turned into Mega Man, or he asked to be turned into Mega Man in order to stop Dr. Wily from taking over the world with his own robots. Uh, Battle Network is incredibly different. Instead of robots, uh, the internet took over, and there are these little AIs that are called net navvies that are used to fight against viruses and help, um, you know, control the internet. And Mega Man is uh, one of those net navvies, and that is his net op or uh, net operator, uh, Lan Hikari. And, um, yeah, uh, those operators are the people that, uh, control NetNavies, or, uh, well, I say control, but, uh, they work together with NetNavies for the most part. They don't actually fully control them, they give them battle chips, and they can talk to them and everything, but the, uh, NetNavies are their own beings. So, uh, this manga starts off with... Dr. Wily nuking uh, the planet, but it was just a simulation. That is uh, what he wants to do, though. And, uh, yeah, he, he says that's his evil plan. And then we cut to Lan at school. Now, today is the day that he's finally going to see his dad again. He's been waiting so long to see his dad because his dad works at uh, the laboratory um, that oversees the internet pretty much. And, uh, he's, he's been waiting to see his dad, so he, he leaves class after, uh, battling his friend Dex in a, um, uh, net navy battle. And Dex has guts, man. And, uh, he gets in trouble with the teacher, but he, he literally just leaps out the window and skates back home. And, uh, when he gets home, he's all excited to see his dad. But then his mom tells him his dad has to stay at the lab because something came up. So he's all depressed, and Mega Man is saying, you know, I'm I'm sorry about that. I knew you were really excited. Your dad sent an email about it, but I just didn't know, you know, I, I didn't I didn't want you to feel bad about this, and th that makes Lan all mad, and he gets mad at Mega Man, says you're just a program, you don't know how I feel, and leaves. Then, um, <laughs> when he leaves and he's going back to school, the school starts blowing up because, um, a net navvy who is later found out to be Torchman, also known as Fireman, um, in the manga, and I, I think in the anime too, they call him Torchman, but he's actually Fireman, and anyway, uh, yeah, he starts overheating the school, and Lan has no idea what to do because he doesn't have Mega Man, but, uh, he gets, um, a call from Mega Man just, um, on one of the other computers, and, uh, he is able to get Mega Man into the school, um, thermostat system and take out Fireman, and, uh, that ends the first chapter. Then the, uh, next couple chapters are really just, um, kind of, like, world-building chapters, um, except for chapter two and the last chapter. So, uh, chapter two starts, um, with the owner of Fireman, um, sending Lan and Mega Man a message while they're in the internet. 
Uh, they are actually in an underground uh, battle tournament because you cannot net battle with your Navi unless you're an adult. Um, I don't know why. That's just how it is in this world. And a uh, fireman shows up and he's like, hey, um, my uh, net op wants to meet you. So, hey, if you uh, if you want to come meet, then uh, yeah, come come by. And it's also revealed there when he comes back that net navvies technically can't die. They can die, but as long as they have backup data, which all of them seem to have, then they can come back. Uh, so Lan goes um, to find the net op, even though Mega Man says it's a bad idea, and they find him. He's Mr. Match, and uh, he offers Lan. He's like, hey, Lan, uh, you know, there's some uh, uh, school system, you know, I, I've been, uh, our group I'm in, we, uh, we want to hack into the school system, and, you know, there's government guys there, but uh, you can fight them, and if you join my group, then uh, you won't have to worry about, you know, the cops trying to catch you or anything for net battling. You can net battle all you want. And uh, he actually does it. Mega Man uh, tells him not to, but he actually does it. And something I didn't expect is, um, you know, most of the time in these sorts of stories, whenever the character does that, it's because they were planning on double-crossing the bad guy. No, Lan actually wanted to do it. Okay, so yeah, um, he goes to the school system and Mega Man won't do it. Mega Man says, no, I'm not doing it. So he says, all right, fine, I'll just use this generic Navi. So uh, Lan goes with Mr. Match, they hack into the school system, and they're fighting off the uh, police Navis. Um, and he's doing a pretty good job, even though he has just this basic Navi, which isn't as powerful as Mega Man. Uh, so, you know, he, he does get hit down fairly easily, but then Mega Man shows up, and Mega Man's trying to get him to stop, and that is when Fireman and Mr. Match reveal their true plan was to get Mega Man there to take him out. Um, you know, getting Land to join was a bonus, but they did want to actually take Mega Man out, and that is when Lan was like, oh, oh no, you ain't doing that. So, uh, yeah, he uses Mega Man to, um, kill Fireman again. And, uh, yeah, that's how that chapter ends. <laughs> they even point out, Lan learned nothing from that chapter. Uh, and then we have, like, a, a fun story where, um, Lan's friend, Akira, uh, he was going to leave town, and they were, like, pranksters, so he, he plays a prank by, um, the, uh, getting his class on a train since they were going on a trip, and hacking into the train to make it, like, go really fast and everything, and then it was going too fast, and, um, viruses showed up, because viruses can show up in this universe, and, uh, Mega Man and Roll, who, who is in this universe as well, uh, she is the net navi of Lan's childhood friend, Mail, or they call her Mailu in the manga, because that's just how her Japanese name is, uh, translated, but it's, pronounced male, and, uh, yeah, they, uh, stop the train, then, uh, chapter four is about, um, everyone in Land's class getting brainwashed by their one teacher, Higsby, who also works for the same group that Mr. Match does, uh, by using his net navi, Number Man. And something that is revealed in this chapter after Lan eventually goes in with Mega Man and uh, Lan meets up with some uh, government guys uh, who take an interest in him. And uh, after uh, he goes in to try to fight Number Man, him and Mega Man, something happens to him and Mega Man and he, he's not sure what it is. They get really powerful for a second, they kill Number Man, and then Lan passes out. And in the next chapter, he wakes up, and he feels like a sharp pain in his head. It's even shown, like, in his mind, like he's bleeding from his head. And, um, he appears in a jail cell, and those government guys are there. And they reveal, yo, so, um, we want to offer you a job, Lan, because we saw what you did, and we're really impressed, so we would like you to, um, take this little test, and we can give you an official 
net battler license so that you can net battle whenever. And uh, yeah, Lan wanted to do it, and then uh, some sirens were going off, and uh, someone was seemingly trying to get into the uh, government system. So Lan uses Mega Man, hacks in, and takes out the Navi, but it turns out it was actually the government guy's Navi, and uh, that was the test to see if Lan and Mega Man could do something known as full synchro, which is explained basically... Uh, the one obstacle for a NetOp and a NetNavi is that a NetOp has to install chips and has to give commands to the NetNavi in order to battle efficiently, but that takes time. What happens with Full Synchro is both the NetOp and the NetNavi kind of merge into one so that um, they know what the other is going to do. So they can plan that out without even having to say it, which basically removes that time gap. And that is what Lan is able to accomplish. And uh, the volume ends with a look at the rival character, Sho. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And uh, there's also a little bonus chapter about uh, Lan meeting Mega Man, which is kind of neat just seeing like a really uh, young Lan getting Mega Man for the first time and seeing... Uh, them bond. But yeah, that is the first volume. So now let's talk about the uh, main characters of this volume. Obviously, we have Lan and Mega Man. Now, Lan, Lan is kind of a jerk. <laughs> like, he's incredibly irresponsible. Uh, he's rude to, like, a lot of people. And, like, he... He is a good kid at heart, right? Like, he, he doesn't do anything that he does because he wants to hurt people. Like, yeah, he plays pranks on everybody with his buddy Akira, but, you know, he doesn't want anyone to get hurt or to, like, die from the pranks. He just wants to pull pranks because he thinks they're funny. And, you know, he didn't leave school because uh, he hates school. Like, yeah, he does hate school, but he didn't leave school because uh, he, you know, just wanted to leave school. He left it because his dad was coming back, and, you know, he really wanted to. Otherwise, he would have stayed. And, um, yeah, I, I think that's interesting for a character because normally in these sort of shonen-type stories, and I believe he's like this in the uh, games and the anime too, where he's essentially just a typical shonen main character, you know, a little bit dumb, a little bit clueless about certain things, but good heart all the time, you know, all that sort of stuff. But in the manga, at least, he is kind of rough, like really rough around the edges. Again, he was fighting police, like police navvies in his school system just because he wanted to battle people. He knew it was a bad idea, but he just wanted to fight people. And it took Mega Man to stop him. And that that's another uh, big thing. Mega Man in this manga is really Lan's voice of reason. He is the one that snaps Lan out of all these bad decisions and always nags him out whenever he does something stupid. Which, uh, it is revealed that while that does annoy Lan, he needs Mega Man to do it because he even knows that he goes too far sometimes with his shenanigans. And uh, he needs Mega Man to talk him out of it, even if it does annoy him, uh, which which I do like. And I, I do like that dynamic, the fact that they do fight a lot of the time, but at the end of the day, they are still really great friends. And even Mail uh, mentions in the first chapter that they act just like brothers. Next up, I guess, since uh, I just brought her up, we will talk about Mail and Roll. Um, they don't really do much in this book. Mail is Lan's childhood friend who uh, kind of thinks his shenanigans are just kind of cute, a little funny. She she knows he plays the delinquent a lot, but he, he has like a, a good heart um, down in there. And um, Roll, uh, I, I, Roll also doesn't like do much in this book, but I do like her. Um, I like how she's, she's a bit of a, um, a, a bit of a prankster herself. She, she does, like, 
having little fun like when Lan and Mega Man were in that underground fighting ring. She's actually the one who stopped it before Fireman showed up by saying that she was a part of the police and that got all of the navvies to run away because none of them have licenses. And she just did a little funny remark like, oh, it looks like none of them had any licenses. So I, I thought that was pretty funny. And I did like how she did help out Mega Man in the uh, chapter three with the train situation. She didn't do much, granted, but it was still cool just to see her fighting in here at all. Then the uh, last big character we'll talk about who gets a focus in this volume is Dex. Dex is, well, he's kind of portrayed as like a bully character, but at the same time, he's not. Like, he's the big, tough, sort of dumb guy, right? And he does like to pick fights a lot, but it's really because he loves his Navi Gutsman, and he just wants Gutsman to be uh, the best Navi he can be. And, uh, you know, he, he can get fed up with people, especially Lan sometimes, which does uh, go to actual, like, fist fights. But you can tell that despite you know, them always getting into battles with each other. They do have a slight respect um, for each other, especially after um, Chapter 4 when Higsby takes over everything and Gutsman tries to stop Number Man, um, and he dies doing it, and that is what motivates Lan and Mega Man to go full synchro for the first time, which that was a really cool moment. I really really like that moment. It, it really does show um, Dex and Gutsman have their own character and personality, and I just really like that. That was very, very nice. So, let's talk about the art. I do really like the art in this book. The uh, facial expressions of the characters are all very nice, very expressive, uh, very detailed. Um, the battles are also kind of neat. I like how they do show the, um, certain chips that, uh, the characters use during the fights and everything. The, uh, only problem with the fights in this book, while they do look kind of neat, they also are very, very short. Like, um, uh, for the most part, you'll see, like, two or three attacks, and then the fight's just over, and, you know, like, I get it, that's, you know, that you can't really do full-on super fights, um, with, you know, the type of story that this is, but still, it is a little bit disappointing that, uh, while, you know, the aesthetic and the background and everything are, like, really good, like, even during the beginning, during the, uh, the nuking. Like, look at that. That looks awesome. And then the fights, you know, they end after just a couple attacks. Like, you know, it's, it's a little disappointing. In conclusion, would I recommend this series? Yes! If you can find it. Uh, the series is very old, uh, the manga series. Uh, so if you could find... Um, like the volumes for a decent price, I would definitely say go for them. But if you can't find them for like cheap enough, if you know th they are expensive, which yes, yeah, some of these can be pretty pricey. Um, yeah, I you you could probably skip um this series. I do really enjoy it. I think it is worth reading, but. Uh, for the price that some sellers are trying to sell these volumes for, it might not be that worth it. I've, I've only read this one. I've only read volume one. Uh, I did order more of the volumes uh, because I did really uh, enjoy this volume a lot. And again, Battle Network's 20 years old. So in the spirit of Battle Network, it would be worth uh, reading this. But... Hopefully someday, Viz, if they still have the license, I, I'm not sure if they do, but if they do, uh, hopefully they can just re-release this manga so more people can read it, because it is really good, really entertaining. Other than the fights being a bit disappointing, just 
because of how short they are. The character interactions are really, really good. The series is a lot darker than I thought it would be, uh, especially compared to the games or the anime. Uh, and yeah, it is just a very well-rounded series that I do think you should check out. Well, guys, this has been Penguin CJP. Sun and it.